I'm Robin Clevett, welcome to my channel. I'm at the big build and it's almost finished. The exterior and the interior are almost done. We've just got the last few little bits and pieces to do. Toilet roll holders and all of those little things like that. Anyway, we are in a position now to put the gutters up here. And traditionally we use half round gutters. Quite a lot of the time we use plastic gutters, but we're in a funny, period at the moment we're a very unsure period people are talking about climate change we're indeed we're in the middle of a drought right now as i stand here in the uk so what happens with drought is the fact that we also get adverse rainfall so all that moisture that's getting sucked into the air is going to be delivered back to us at some point and we're going to get these extreme rainfall events that are happening in other parts of europe and indeed the world so I personally think that we need to start thinking about using a bigger gutter, making sure we think about just how much water we've got to get away from a building. And in this case, we're gonna make a start and we're gonna use a seamless gutter. This gutter has about double the volume of a typical half round plastic gutter. But that's all good and well, if you're not putting enough outlets in, and you've got enough, not got enough downpipes to get that water away, it's just gonna spill over the top, fill up those downpipes, and the rain will beat the gutter. So we've got six sections here to do, and each one has its own downpipe and its own drain, which goes directly off to the soak away. So we're in good shape. We just gotta make it now. This is made on site. It's an amazing machine. It's gonna turn up in the back of a van. We're gonna make it to measure and it's super quick. It's lovely to fix and it looks great. So keep tuned and join me for this video all about gutters. In anticipation of Richard's arrival with the gear and the truck, I'm gonna get as much done as, in preparation as possible. So I've been round and I've marked the most suitable position for the clips. This butts up against the soffit in every position, then I know it's gonna be fairly equal. Then all I need to do is pilot them. Now I'm using a five mil pilot bit. I'm using a four millimeter masonry bit, which is quite small. It's probably the smallest masonry bit, an SDS bit you can get. And I'm using a masonry screw. So what that means is I'm not putting a raw plug in the wall. I'm just gonna be using a masonry screw, which is designed for exterior use. It's got a pan head, which works really nicely with the flat of these brackets. If you put a counter sunk one in, the screw sort of sticks up and sticks out. And I think they look really nice. So we've effectively got this template ready to go. All we've got to do now is finish preparing this, get the gutters up, get the downpipes up, and the jobs are good. How's it going? Yeah, good. Okay. Is, it, is it hot enough for you? It's too hot for me. Why don't we do guttering on the hottest day of the year, mate? Yeah, why not? Let's go. How's it going? All right. Yeah, so, Richard's here. We're going to crack on and start measuring and sorting out all the bits we need. It's a super simple process. We measure all the dead lengths, then it's out to the machine, and we actually produce each piece to that exact length, so there's no joins anywhere. Indeed, I've been with Richard before where we put a 17 meter long section in between the two of us, and that was quite amazing too. So we'll go out to the machine and we'll demonstrate just how brilliant this is. So you've actually just run off this first length. You've hooked the tape on, incidentally the tape you measured with, which I always reckon is really good practice. You've hooked the tape on, it runs down the inside of the gutter to where is the, where's the guillotine on this? So the guillotine is just located just behind here. See this here? Ah, so you make an approximation on the length, do you? Yeah, yeah. But basically you've got a 10 mil tolerance. Brilliant. The thickness of the blade here. Um, okay, that's brilliant. And then so you've run it off. It's come from that flat sheet, that flat roll, through this amazing device, this amazing machine, powered by electricity. And then it's come out of here. I like the little tape. I like the little tape roll. 
Is that a standard thing or have you added that? No, it's a standard thing. Plus you put your brackets on every 400 millimetres. Well, that's good because most gutters are 900, you know the plastic ones, people put them at 900. There's a, li there's a, little, uh, a little nipple they have on the back of the metal there. Is that actually what your space is? Yep. So is the machine performing that as it does it as well? That's it, yeah. There's a little, there's a little marker on the roll here. As, as it passes through there, it puts yeah. a, little, a little marker. Ah, I love it. I love it. Which is great because that saves time as well. But for every 400 millimetres is fantastic because that's a really well supported gutter, isn't it? That's right. So what sort of screws we got? I use a... A2 stainless steel bolt. So, oh yeah, they're lovely. They'll go right through all the fascias and everything, That's won't it. they? Yeah, lovely. They've got the little pre-drill on there so, as well. So that cuts through. through the back of the gutter. That's it. Which is nice, because you're getting all the prep done that round here, aren't you? That's right, you get it all done before it goes up. Let's, uh, Less time messing around on ladders. They're a nice fixing, aren't they? It's just sometimes with this you can, when you're trying to fix it up, up on there, it's a bit awkward sometimes. So yeah. by having a bolt, you can locate your driver on it easier. So what sort of, what's the next bit of preparation you need to do to this? Um, for this particular one, I've just got to put the stop end on. Yeah. And then we're away. Can go Brilliant. Up. So how does this cleat work? So how does this cleat work? Basically a two-part component. Uh, you put the bottom piece in, yeah. comes in two halves. Put the bottom piece in, yeah. 
you've got two little screws there and then you basically put the mastic in and then they both go together and yeah. then the screw will basically close the mastic and make, make a walk tight seal. So it's like a clamp? It's like a clamp, yes. Well that's what you call fancy gutter fitting isn't it? Yes. And using that sealant, uh, which is approved for this system, that's it. Yep. Um, and you use a good bit of it. So, so that is a good sealing. And I, mean, I know that brand, and it's one of those ones that you know is, is well tested, isn't it? You know, that's it's right. going to take all extremes. Hot on a day like today, we've got thirty-five degrees. That's right. Exactly. And in the winter, it's going to get down to minus five degrees. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's quite important, isn't it? So you have to clip all that together. Ah, oh, it's good, isn't it? I mean, it's really good. It's got loads of cover as well, isn't it? Oh, that's neat, isn't it? Yeah, that's neat. And that's really going to clamp everything together lovely, eh? Yeah, so you just want to get it so the mastic squeezes out of it nicely. And yeah. It's not going anywhere. And we've just got to put a bit more sealant uh, in over, over the top of over the fixings. The screws. Yeah, naturally. Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? You just make a, a belt and braces job of it. That's it. That's it. So once the initial gutters are fixed, you can see that there's no outlets. The beauty of this system is you can literally position them anywhere you want. So Richard has asked me where I want the first one. Now what I'm doing, because I have a drain on this side, is I'm effectively going to come out of here 45 down and along this wall so it's off this face so to mark it if i hold this like that then that'll give richard his center there you go richard how's that yeah perfect yeah so i've made the hole up there so then you pass that through put the, locate the cutter on top and i'm basically going to wind it in and as i wind the blade comes down and oh that's hole, clever cuts a hole in the metal and that hole there is just an estimate of what you think you need. Um, yeah, I mean, I, ru I always roughly know. Yeah, it's experience. It's how you learn. It's how you learn, mate. Oh, so it's manual. That's it. Oh, it's brilliant. Ah, oh, that is good. What about if the, um, if the, Gutters too close to the wall. You just have to in shorter, shorter. Turns. Oh, you take it out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So you were lucky there then. I was very lucky. Yeah. Great. And then what's how what happens next for your outlet? Yeah. So here we've got, this is a metal outlet. Let's have a couple of different ones. But it's a metal one and it just fits in there perfectly. And then we put sealant around it. Oh, brilliant. Oh yeah, that's a good job. It's a nice thing, isn't it? So Richard is now making the hole again for the outlet. We've got a laser up there so it's easy for him to see exactly where he's going to go. And then I'll carry on and do the downpipe. Now I've got a really nice technique for doing these downpipes and I'm going to take you through that now. I think it's quite useful to see how I uh, go about it. You like that drill? Yeah, it's a really good brushless drill, and even with this bit, which are unwieldy, aren't they? Yeah. You know, they, they take a bit of getting used to these things. Flew for it. Yeah, lovely, yeah, just a nice little bit of power. Yeah, that'll just keep going and going and going, that will. So while Richard's getting ready to do the cut in the bottom of there, I've got this board, and I sort of mentioned this earlier on, and this is basically my bracket positions for the six down pipes that I've got. All I have to do, wherever I am, is butt it against the soffit board here and pile it through. That's it, that's as easy as that. And then all I have to do then is make the pieces. I've got sort of two um, 45s, we call them 45s, two 45s and a small piece of pipe. And then obviously the down pipe straight into, in this case, into an existing part of a pipe that's in the ground. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I actually work that out simply.
So to get me from here down to the ground, I need two measurements. I need the height, the overall height of everything, and I need the projection. To get your projection, pop your clip on, hook your tape in, and measure out to the outside of the outlet here. Um, I've got 170 millimeters, that's what I need over on the bench. We'll take it over there now and I'll show you how I get my angles and my projections. So to work out the pipe projection, it's super easy. I need 170 millimeters. That is the overall, whether it's the center, center, front to front, back to back, it doesn't matter. I've got one side of my pipe with the edge of this board measuring over the projection, which is 170. I'm just gonna pop a line down there at 170. We're gonna pop in a fitting which is like our transition fitting, if you like. It's gonna take us in the right direction. And we are gonna aim another one exactly on the same edge. So that's the same side to same side. Then we're gonna measure the section between. Now with guttering, you can be, you know, five or 10 mil within uh, tolerance, if you like. So it's quite straightforward. So we've got 118. I'll cut a piece 118 from an off cut, and then that will go together and that will give me the projection I need. Then to measure the height, I keep the end of there, that's where it touches the bottom of the gutter, and I measure from the edge of the board. So that's flush with the edge of the board, and I can just literally measure all the way down here, mark the pipe to exactly where I want it, and I'll use a clip, I'll slide a clip along. There we go, 2480. That's what we want, that's where I'll cut it, and it will fit. So we've got a difficult one here because we've got uh, a socket in a socket. So it's gonna to wanna to be a bit, it's gonna be wanna to be bent in. Let's get some steps. I know it's gonna have a good fit, be a good fit. It looks like that already. So we can just basically we need to spring this together. So we need to do one of these, put that in there, and then spring it together like that. And then when we put our clips in, it's all perfectly perfect. There we go. Alright. And that is a pucker job. So what I was saying is with this, our board, that represents a soffit at the top, so it goes behind effectively. And if I wanted to, I could just plumb it up there. Okay, keep it plumb, bang my um, fixings through, and the job is a good one. Let's just take him out of the way for a minute while I do that. Then we just pop it all back together, spring it in just like before, and pop our clips on to those pre drilled holes. Using a screw which doesn't require a plug, it's a masonry screw. I'm using a four millimeter uh, masonry, which is actually quite, quite small if you like, it's quite tiny, but it does hold really nicely. And it's got a pan head. So it looks really nice, but they do bite in to the masonry really nicely. Just line that up there. It's nice and tight. And then it's just the last clip on the bottom. Might struggle with this one because the render has been adjusted. Oh, it seems fine. So, so we've added the render on. So the line of the pipe below, which is concrete in the ground, is slightly back, but we can manage with this. It's got enough give in it. Let's try and get that into the R. There we go. There we go, this one. Let's try and get the next. It's a nice, satisfying operation. Perfect. Moving on to the next one. There so this, go. Richard, looks amazing. Tell us about this. So this is the uh, Alurex Leaf Guard, um, a Canadian product. It's very good. Uh, yeah, is I it, mean. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, doesn't let pine needles through or anything like that, so it's, uh, it's a really good system. If it works in Canada, it's going to be working good here exactly. because we do have 
on that elevation, on that side of the building, we've got some uh, oaks and they, they do literally deliver a lot of leaves in the winter. So I just think if you're gonna have this system done, you've got a lot of trees, even on the sides we've got the trees, if you put this in, it's gonna save you a lot of aggravation, isn't it? Definitely. A lot of cleaning Definitely. and that sort of stuff. And do you know whether or not these can take a big volume of rain. Do you reckon it will spill out the top of these with these on or not? Uh, no, basically because of this lip here. Oh, this, right, this okay. It, oh, so they'll actually fill up a little bit and then soak through. It will soak through, yeah. Well, Robin, what a day. All right, so we've got our water on. Go what? We've got water. our water, yeah. 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 Finally, frozen. we've got our frozen water. We've been drinking water literally all day, haven't we? Yes. So we're here, we've done the business on the hottest day of the year. <laughs> We've, we've had some adventures over in yes. our lives, haven't we? Yes, Sim we have, seriously, yes. we've had some adventures. But um, you know, doing guttering on the hottest day of the year, I think, has got to be, um, yeah. It was a challenge. It was a challenge. Yeah, we got there. But it looks amazing, and anyone who's never seen a seamless gutter before, because um, a lot of people haven't, have they? When when they come across what you do, yeah, no, no, it's surprising because it's a system that's been over here for. 30 odd years yeah. um but yeah it doesn't seem to be that much of it around still but the most amazing thing about all this is is that you can turn up pretty much turn up on site and fabricate what you need that's right for every single bit correct so it, you've only got like four or five components haven't you that's right four or five components uh everything's to measure so there's not a lot of waste um yeah and it goes up relatively quickly. Yeah, and what I really like about the system is the fact that all the all the fixings are hidden, but the fixing that you're fixing through is actually holding or supporting the front edge because yeah. that that solid piece of aluminium, like the bracket, if you like, is is fixed through. That's where you're fixing through. It's clamping the back, but it's clipped onto the front. So even if with with a heavy load of snow, you've got a lot more support. Yeah. Yeah. on the front of that gutter yeah. than you would have on plastic, for example. I mean, there's no comparison, if you ask me. You look at the line there, it's absolutely brilliant. You've got a patent sort of end cap, you've got a clamp system on the internals yeah. and on the external misers as well. And I just think that's really nice as well. Um, it's very easy to maintain because you put so much of your um, silicon, effectively, the yeah. one that's approved for this system, sandwich between and on a day like this it's going to go off perfectly isn't yeah, it yeah 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 you know if it's well. raining obviously it's not so much fun is it no no, no. anyone who's fitted gutters at the bottom of roof soap in the rain knows yeah. it's probably the most annoying thing yeah all the water going down your arms down your arms it goes yeah. here and it gets all the way down oh, it's horrible isn't it it's absolutely yeah. horrible anyway we'll have a little walk around have a quick run and gun then we've got to get off as i say it's the hottest day of the year um but we want to show you this we have a little chat about it as we go and i hope you enjoyed this also, it's 100% recyclable, 100%. You know, when this comes to the end of its life, which will probably be in about 30, 35, 40 years, something like that, whoever takes it down will go, oh, I'm gonna take this to the scrap merchant. And it'll go to the scrap merchant and it'll get recycled. Unfortunately, the UPVC, they don't recycle it at the moment. It just goes straight to landfill. What about the colors? What colors does it come in? Um, yeah, well, we've got sort of a core colors of um, black, anthracite, white, brown, uh, and there's a light, a light gray, but also there's um, gonna be quite a few more colors coming soon. Brilliant. In terms of inquiries, are more and more people doing this? Are more and more people looking for this based on the fact of what we spoke about earlier, the rain getting a little bit more extreme and the volumes of rain? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, definitely, I mean, the volumes of rain, you know, we've had this all this lovely sunshine, but I bet you there's going to be flooding after this. You know, you know it's coming. You do. Um, and so, yeah, and these plastic gutters would have been battered by the sun. So a lot of them will be leaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And do they make a noise? Because people really complain about plastic going crack, crack. No, not as far as. I've never heard an aluminium no. crack. Today would have been the day you'd have heard it, yeah, wouldn't you? Definitely. Because the, the sun, when we started this morning, was shining all over these elevations here. And we thought we would uh, we needed to get these done first because my client had some friends around. So we got these bits done first. Then we went on to the front and then on the far side. And the sun literally followed us all the way, didn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. So Definitely. we've actually been baked all the way. Now quickly, let's go and have a look at your machine again. Yeah. And because there's some really interesting stuff there. Let's go and yep, see that. Okay, so this is a combo machine, which basically means this 
this machine can actually be swapped between a 125 mil deep flow gutter and a 150 mil deep flow gutter. It could do two sizes. Obviously you can see the reel here, which is double sided. So this one's black 9005 and anthracite 7016. Whichever way it's fed in, it'll come out either anthracite or black. It feeds in here and you can just see the rollers just slowly start taking it up. And as you go over further, you can see it, it bends it right up into the OG shape, the original Gothic shape. Let me try and get there around it. Oh, that's it. This is where the action happens. So we've got the covers removed for the benefit of showing your mechanically minded and interested people just how this works. It's beautifully engineered, lots of chains and, and mechanics in there. And I reckon, and it's running on electric. It's um, 240, is it? Uh, 110. 110, okay, it's incredible to think this huge machine can run off just, a, just that and not three phase. Mm. And here it is, here is the um, gutter coming out the other end. I think that's absolutely fantastic. So, Richard, that's the end of a busy, busy day. Yes. I think it's time to go home now, chill out. Grab a beer. Any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Richard will monitor the questions every now and then. So hope you've got anything for Richard, please ask. I'll also leave a link to Richard in the description of this video if you want further information about how you can go about getting seamless gutters like this to deal with the weather and most of all, for a beautiful job. Now, thanks for joining me. I'll catch you all again soon.